So I wasn't going to make this deck, but somebody requested it on the comments of uh, one of my videos. So I thought, why not? Let's do it. I, only because I don't think she's alive anymore to crew the weather light. I'm pretty sure she's dead now, but oh well, let's make it anyway. It was pretty tough, I have to say, just because this is apparently tier zero, even without a paradox engine. So the paradox engine with this lady gets to untap all the stuff, keep untapping her, cast more things, untap everything, so on and so forth. So that's not in the deck, but you're still facing tier zero. So I do warn you, if you do build this deck, you will face very powerful opponents like Essica and Bridge. And that's why I've included like the Graph Tigger's Cage, because this stops cards in graveyards and libraries entering the battlefield. So this doesn't stop Planeswalkers coming in, but it does stop creature cards entering. And also it stops graveyard decks from being cheeky. This does stop you doing it as well, but not many cards in the deck really care about that. So it's just a nice way to stop Essica decks a little bit. Not completely, but just a little bit. So as you can imagine, a deck like this is filled with legends. So essentially you can put whatever legends you want in. It's like pick and mix doesn't really matter too much as long as they can hold their own. So I've gone for quite a few Planeswalkers like Vivian Monsters Advocate, Vivian Reed, which is just amazing. She can just destroy artifacts, enchantments, or creatures with flying, which is very versatile and very relevant, especially in the format with so many enchantments running Riot. You've got a couple of Garricks in here as well, which are just really nice ways to close the game out with creature-based damage. But it's not doing anything too fancy. We're essentially just tutoring. There's a lot of uh, ways to ramp mana, you know, like the usual stuff, land or elves, kill the goose, uh, into the north, lotus cobra, and you've also got a lot of ways to destroy artifacts and enchantments, like I said before, that like broken bond is one of the unsung heroes, I think, of the format, that not anyone, don't really see anyone use this, to destroy artifacts and enchantments, and put a land into play, pretty relevant, you're probably going to want a Heliot intervention as well, just to take care of Goshen Tidex, and the weathered runestone, runestone is nice, because there's non-land permanents, in libraries can't enter the battlefield so this stops a few things as well just be careful not to hurt yourself when you make this kind of deck because we're trying to essentially meta hard against the top tier deck so you're gonna to have to put some cards in to stop them otherwise it's just gonna be really difficult uh, I'll say one of the best cards in the deck is probably Tashar because when your stuff dies you can bring it out of the graveyard by casting legends historic spells the deck list will be in the description below so make sure to check that out don't forget to let, leave me a like and a sub and also check out my new twitter page that i've just made and hopefully i'll be adding to that as time goes on and you can see a little bit of behind the scenes uh where youtube doesn't really allow me to do that sort of stuff so yeah check out my twitter it will be in the description as well let's get into the games We are first against a very powerful General Rafine. Probably some kind of Esper Reanimator shell looking to put stuff into the graveyard, reanimate them on turn 4 to 5, and then potentially finish us off with humongous creatures that we're going to struggle to deal with. But we do have Wrath of God. We have Ramp and a Board Wipe, so this might be very useful. Toski as well can actually survive the Board Wipe, so maybe getting him out first could be important here. Cultivate as well, it's just a really solid, it's a really solid hand. As long as the Cold Steel Heart gets to hit the battlefield. Took quite some time there to play a basic island. Mox Amber, so. I'm not sure if having the Mox Amber out uh, this early is very useful. We've also got Grafdigger's Cage, which pretty much annihilates their entire strategy if they do have a reanimation. So let's just hope we can actually resolve some stuff, because if they've got Thought Seize or something... Wow, they're foretelling. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to cultivate here because we want the lands in hand and field. I think I'm going to go for white times two because we've got a lot of white cards in hand. So it's probably safe to leave this out, isn't it? So if we fragmentize the Mox Amber, it's probably quite useful. I mean, here's the thing. I've always said never, ever play the Mox Amber out unless you can use it because they played it there for the literal no advantage and now they just lost it without being able to use it one time. And because Fragmentize is a sorcery, they would have had at least one use from it, but there you go. 
Okay, so maybe we want to troll them first by letting them... Because they put a creature in the bin. So I think... Yeah, I think we'll go for Toski. Graf Digger's Cage. And let's see what they do. So we're going to take a little bit of a hit here, but it does also mean they put more things onto the field. They could they could just have a removal spell for Graf Digger's Cage, of course. But if, as long as this is on the field, they're not going to be able to reanimate this Archery of Ifnir, which would be annoying for the Toski as well. Changeling Outcast, okay. Lots of weenies here. And an Ornithopter, okay, so if we get to resolve this Wrath of God, it's going to be really good. We might even just see a concession after this board wipe. I don't think they're going to have a way to even prevent it because Pact of Negation would just kill them on their upkeep. Discarding more ways to reanimate. So they've, yeah, they've sussed onto the fact that the cage is just crushing their entire deck. And let's see if this can resolve. Fantastic. So yeah, sometimes Graf Digger's Cage is all you need. Honestly, in this tier 0, tier 1 meta, the cage is awesome. Really, really good. So here we have one of the most painful matchups. Uh, niv at Paran. If they resolve this, we pretty much die. Our creatures don't have much toughness here. Manor Isles gets killed by one ping. Captain Seasay gets killed by two. So if they get to six mana, we are in a lot of trouble. So let's try and resolve the Coastal Heart. If they counter this, next turn we could go for this Garrick. Hmm, okay, so that got through. And for the sake of leaving the mana up, I'm actually just not going to attack. I don't think one damage is going to be that important here. Three mana up. Okay. Let's see if we can cultivate. Getting some planes would be useful. Hmm. Having our spells resolve is incredibly nice. Yeah, I guess we'll just keep passing then. Wasting their time is what we do best. Search for glory will eventually be able to find uh, Elspeth Conquer's death or something useful like that. Thali is very good as well. Although Barstone, if they put this on two, they're going to be able to kill the Cold Steel Heart and the Thalia. So let's see if we can resolve this. They might want to counter this. Because if it makes all their spells more expensive, it's going to make them less explosive when it comes down. Chemist is insight, okay. And in that case, let's go for the Garrick as well. Back off. And yeah, I think ticking up's fine because you, if we do get to the seven loyalty here, I like to think might be really. Really good for us, just putting creatures into play from our deck. Interesting, so the cycling, which means they're screwed on mana? Oh no, they discarded a land, which is a bit odd. That well, felt pretty weird. I think it would have been better to just play that land, but damn, awesome. Being a Niv player. Okay, opening us first with a Gruul build of Halana and Elena. So a very powerful deck actually it gives stuff counters and haste, which is rather terrifying. Although saying that, we do have the Day of Judgment, which means we can kind of just nullify all the creatures they play for a while anyway. Oof. Although next turn they're going to be able to uh, get Halana out. So we've got three mana. We don't want to play any more creatures, do we? I think. I think we get into the north to get a land just because if they have a way to kill the Cold Steel Heart, we are going to essentially be behind on mana, and we don't want that, even though we have the land or elves, but we are going to lose this with the Day of Judgment. So, depending on what they do, 
we'll see. If they if they don't go for the um, Halana here, it's, okay, they're going for Rhythm of the Wild first. I suppose that's okay. So we'll go for Temple. Keep a land. Well, we want to try and find a land on top. Cold Steel Heart. And then we could even go for. No, I want to keep Shigeki in my hand for now, I think. Let's swing in. It's unlikely they're going to block. If they do, we're probably just going to give it God's Willing. Although, he, yeah, that was very unlikely, let's face it. So, we're setting up for the Day of Judgment next turn with the Gilded Goose back up after that. Elysian Caryatid will be nice to kill because it gives them two mana if they control creature power four greater as well. Runaway Steamkin and a Kadama. Okay, so they're going to be able to ramp for. Ooh, they chose to give them both counters. That's interesting. So now we've got the Arrow of Revelation. Don't feel too bad about using the Day of Judgment here. Because then we've got another way to wipe the field. Let's, let's play the Shigeki because it's a way to get more lands into play. And we will be able to return him to our hand by doing that. And then we can do the channel ability if we really want to. This guy is it's an army in a ten. It's way too good in my opinion. We're <laughs> just way too many abilities. Mars Vandal's coming down, killing the Cold Steel Heart. Oh no, they're going to exile the enchantment, of course. Damn, that's a downside and a half. I suppose, yeah. I suppose that's balance. Okay, let's go for the Cissé. She will be our backup plan. We can search for a legendary land in the next turn. Rada, so they're going to be able to play lands from the top of the grid, the top of their deck now. Yeah, the Mars Vandal was a good hit, I have to say. Play the land, which was actually a spell. Pretty nifty. Damn. So this Rada's going to be pretty scary as well. Let's see what we can find. Might be a way to deal with it. Four, five, six. Kogler. That's a card. So we can use Kogler to beat up the Rada, which... It's going to be relevant because rather a late game can start paying six mana to give her plus X equal to lands, and we don't want to be hit by that because it won't take many hits for that to kill us. They're really waiting for the Halana, aren't they? If they don't deal with the Kokla, we can also destroy their rhythm next turn. Terror of the Peaks. That is a scary card. Five haste. Right, let's search for another kill spell, possibly the Ugin. Or we could go for Vivian Reed. No, I think Ugin's fine. We are but most so we'll kill the Terra. And then we're going to swing with the Kogla to also no deal with their rhythm. Seems legit. So now we don't have to worry too much about that. Instance. And then we can also go for the Goose in case they choose to attack Ugin. I'm happy to block here to save the Ugin. It's definitely a worthy trade. Here comes Magda. And Halana and Elena. So they can give Magda haste. Now they're both swinging at Ugin. There's no point blocking. Because he will die inevitably here. That's interesting. They're choosing to give me the option. Wow. Both swinging at me. Yeah, no blocks, then we're going to 8. Halo Fountain. Right, let's find something else with Cissé. Something with Lifelink would be nice. Or even Wandering Emperor as well. Yeah, this kills the Magda, which I think is going to be useful. Let's go ahead and exile the Magda now. We also gain 2 life. Who harms my people must this Halana and Lena is obviously very powerful, but we just my have to uh, hold off for now. And do I want to? I think I do want to attack because we're getting close to finishing them off as well. And we also get to kill a treasure, which may be relevant. 
we can also leave up a mana for the gods willing. Let's see what they do next. Could be useful for giving the... Oh my goodness. Galta with Trample. I think they just win, don't they? That's 14 Trample. Oh, damn. They caught us off guard with that. Yeah, the Trample. So, all we can do is... Chomp. <laughs> yeah, all we can do is chomp. Because we're still going to take more than enough. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. They got us with the Galta. Damn. Did not expect that. So in hindsight, it would have been good to kill the Halana at some point, but I suppose the only way out there was the Owl Re Revelation, sadly. Oh well. Still an interesting game. We go first, and starting hand is actually, it's not great, but we do have a couple of reasons to keep it. The Thalia and the Fateful Absence are going to be pretty decent. We even have the Tashar to bring Thalia back if things go wrong. So yeah, let's start with Thalia. She might be able to stop them playing their early Mana Rocks, which will delay them even further into casting the Narset. Nice. Okay. I'm happy about this. We've got Fateful Absence up. We've got Banishing Slash in case they do play a Mana Rock. Sadly, we didn't have the double white for the Adeline, but... Okay. Another... So, yeah, we didn't get the white source, did we? So, it doesn't look like we're going to do much here. If they have a board wipe, it does screw us up quite a bit, to be honest. I, I do suppose we have Teshar to reanimate some stuff, but we'll see. So they're probably going to discard a card, kill the Cissé. But then in return we kill the like Narset, so... Rapids. Yeah, that's... Intriguing. Unfortunately, we cannot return Cissé with Teshar's ability. They discarded a 7 mana card to do that. Seems extreme, but there you go. Okay, let's swing in. Kill the Narset. I'm kind of happy with that trade. 4 mana for 4 mana. We're going to get a Yashan, give us some lands here. I know when to concede. We're going to get the much needed planes, which we've been waiting a few turns for here. And a forest, of course. And once again, they can't cast a Narset unless they deal with Thalia, so let's see if they care about that. Bretagard Stronghold is a nice way to just pump one of our creatures to make them a bit stronger. Time warping on an empty field, you know how I feel like that. Basically says draw a card, play a land. Day of Judgment. Okay. So now I want to... They can just go for the Narset. So let's go for Garrick and Paradise Druid, I think. And yeah, I'm going to uptick. I want to make them fear Garrick because if he gets to minus seven, it's going to be really good. So, three, four, five, six. So, next time we can go for Tashar and. Tashar and Adeline, Adeline, and we can return the Thalia. So, it looks like they're going to kill the Garrick here. Goodness me. Very versatile, I have to say. We have our own Day of Judgment here. So, yeah, let's let's just swing in, kill the Narset. It is kind of annoying, but... My apologies. I lost my and yeah, we'll go for the Captain Cissé, which is pretty scary, because if they have a board wipe, again, it slows us down massively, but... We're looking for that... Mana Source. Trophy Mage gives them... An artifact that costs three exactly. Tome of the Infinite. That's something we're going to kill with the Banishing Slash here. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. So let's search for. I think we want a land here. Which sounds crazy, but we just we just need it. There's no way to get. Yeah, let's just go for it here. Way too good to leave this line around. If they counter it, then. 
Okay, they have a negate. Sure thing. Okay, well, we'll leave... We'll leave our guys up with the Snakeskin Veil. I mean, if they go for the Narset again, target the Tashar, we can give it Hexproof, but... Looks like that is exactly what they're going to do. In lieu of going for the Tower Tomb of the Infinite. Well, they're saying that. They might even go for the Captain C Sane. In which case, they're not going to be able to get either one. I think I would definitely go for the Tashar. Yep, so... Are they going to concede here? No? Okay. So that would suggest that they still have extra turn spells in their hand and stuff. So let's go for the c -say. We want to find more ways to kill their crap. I think... Vivian Reed's a pretty, pretty good answer here. Farley comes to play. Let's kill the tome. They didn't get a single activation, which is great. Restoration was painless. And Wandering Emperor would be good against creature deck, but they're not creature decks, so let's just swing over the top and Narset. And to be honest, I don't really want to commit any more things to the board, because if they have a wipe, they're going to get everything as is. Adeline will be a nice way to replenish our army. She should be called Adeline Replenisher of the Thar. You find some prisoners. So they're getting desperate now. <laughs> Two lands and a uh, protection spell. Now, interestingly, the protection spell can only give them protection from green or white, but not both. So whatever they choose, we are going to be able to block with the other creature. Solemn Simulacrum, okay. Yeah, that was a desperation move to find the prisoners there, because they chose random over actual cards in their hand, and that's a bit of a tell. That they don't have a board wipe in their hand. Pretty confident about that. So let's search for a card of Cissé. You can see the sheer power. If she's untouched, she can just get anything. We can even, like, start going for the wing con, really. Let's find something else with a Vivian Reed. Come to me. Kogler. Wonderful. So I think we're going to go for the Kogla first, because we can also give him Indestructible by returning a human to our hand. So we'll kill the Trophy Mage. Unless they give it Hexproof. Sure, God's willing. Yeah, that makes sense. What colour they choose? They choose green. Okay, well, luckily for us, we're just going to go over the top anyway. And I think I'm going to shock this Temple Garden in. So in case they do something like board wipe, then we wouldn't have the mana open for some... Or oh, they're saying that, yeah. It would have cost two if Thalia died anyway, so that was a bit silly to shock that in, to be honest. You never know. There might be sequence where Kokla can play two. Oof. Just drawing a land. So if we return Cissé to hand, then we'll save the Kogler. Actually, we can return two things, can't we? We can return Thalia as well. That's actually pretty crazy. Saving two... Three of our creatures, really. Beginning. Minus 14, that's pretty funny. Okay, then we can even swing in, kill the restoration of a Ganjo now. We can deal 14 damage with the God Tunnel Ronus if we really wanted to. Do we want to do that? It's not lethal, so there's no point. Yeah, there's no point doing a lethal move. Because we might need that extra damage later on. Down to 11. And they're in trouble. They really are in trouble. So let's go for Cissé. Human. So currently we can return... Cissé to our hand to prevent him dying. So we don't need to go for two creatures, because a board wipe here would be fine for us, to be honest. Fateful Absence might just do the trick here. See what they go for. Either way, they're not going to be able to kill either of our things. Authority of the consoles. Okay, yeah. So they're pretty much just dead, right? 
We might as well kill the Narset. EOT. I will meditate on defeat. So they've got one mana open. Uh, if that's the case, let's make them reveal the path or swords. Sorry, swords of plowshares. Yep, nice, nice victory there. Don't forget to check out more of my videos and also my Kofi donations page. You can donate as little or as much as you want.